Marissa Ledias. I'm Spencer Anderson. And welcome to Tour to Go. If you live in Pullman, chances are that you're either from Seattle or its vicinity, or that you've been there at least once or twice. Even if this is true, today's episode is all about showing you the side of Seattle that you probably haven't seen yet. So let's go. In case you didn't know, Seattle's a pretty big city. With a population of around 650,000 and 3.5 million people in the surrounding area, Seattle is the largest city in the Pacific Northwest. It is also an old city with a rich history. 4,000 years before the first settlers came to this area, Native Americans were already living what is now known as Seattle. The city was named in honor of Chief Seattle of the local Duwamish and Suquamish tribes. If you've been to Seattle, you know that the weather can be a little, how can I put this? bleak. In this episode, however, we want to show you all the great outdoor activities that Seattle has to offer, as well as giving you a glimpse into its history and neighborhoods. Seattle is infamous for its constant rainy weather, but don't let that keep you indoors. There's tons of beautiful parks and places to visit, and if you have the right clothes, you can enjoy all of them without getting too wet. First up on the list is the Union Bay Natural Area, also known as Mount Lake Phil. Located next to Lake Washington, this wildlife conservation area managed by the University of Washington covers 74 acres and boasts four miles of shoreline. If you like animals, particularly birds, this is the place to be. Over 200 different species of birds have been seen here. This site also has a pretty cool history. As its name indicates, it used to be landfill until 1996. Over the years, the land has regenerated, forming an interesting landscape characterized by rolling hills and marshes. If marshes aren't your thing, we got you covered. Seattle has a ton of beautiful beaches, so to the beach we go. If you want to enjoy amazing views of the city while also feeling in contact with nature, head over to Alki Beach Park. This long stretch of land runs from Alki Point to Duwamish Head on Elliott Bay. While particularly popular in the summer, it's also the perfect spot for a long walk any time of the year. As many other places in the Seattle area, this park has a long history. It's the site of the landing of the first white settlers back in 1851. By the early 20th century, the beach had become so popular that a special railway line was built to take people there all the way from the city. At one point, it also featured a Coney Island style amusement park. There are monuments along Alki Beach that pays tribute to its fascinating history so make sure to check those out. It is also one of the best places to snap a picture of the Seattle skyline. Bonus points if you manage to get one of Seattle's iconic ferries in the frame. The last place on our list of awesome outdoor spaces is Gasworks Park. Located on the north shore of Lake Union, this park contains the remains of the last coal gasification plant in the U.S. Designed by well-known architect Richard Hogg, this park has been called one of the weirdest in the world because of its eccentric repurposing of the gas plant ruins. The park offers beautiful views and has many interesting things to do. It features a large sundial on one of its hills and it has a popular spot for flying kites. There are also numerous picnic and barbecue spots, which make it a perfect place to spend a lazy summer afternoon. It also seems like the ruins have become a popular destination for the parkour enthusiasts. So, if you see people doing backflips off the old gas plant structures, don't freak out. In addition to featuring some truly amazing outdoor spaces, Seattle is also known to be a city of neighborhoods. In this episode, we take you on a flash tour of some of our favorites and show you fun stuff to do in each one. Let's start with one of the most unusual, Fremont. Originally its own separate city, it was incorporated into Seattle in 1891. Known as a particularly artsy neighborhood, it houses a controversial statue of a Russian communist revolutionary, Vladimir Lenin. I know, random, right? Most people visit Fremont not to see Lenin, but the neighborhood's most famous inhabitant, the Fremont Troll. Located under the Aurora Bridge, this statue is a must-see if you're in the area. Fremont's quirkiness is best appreciated through a walking tour. While you're at it, we recommend stopping at some of the numerous microbreweries that line this neighborhood's streets and sampling a beer or two. Want to check out a less eccentric side of town? Head over to one of Seattle's hottest neighborhoods, Ballard. Located on the northwest corner of Seattle, Ballard is now one of the most popular and in-demand areas in the city. 
Didn't always used to be like this, though. Up to the 20th century, it was a quiet neighborhood inhabited mostly by fishermen and loggers. Today, it offers a vibrant nightlife scene, pricey shops, and top-notch restaurants. If you're in the area, make sure to check out the Ballard Locks, which regulate the water levels on Lake Washington's Ship Canal. The locks offer awesome views and the opportunity to watch salmon jump through a fish ladder. Who says you can't enjoy a little bit of nature while smack dab in the middle of a large city? If you have been dying to travel outside the U.S. but cannot afford it, Sierra has you covered. Head over to the International District for a fun multicultural experience. The International District is just east of well-known Pioneer Square known as the ID. This area features a vibrant mixture of stores, services, and restaurants run by Japanese, Vietnamese, Filipino, and Thai immigrants. If you want to learn more about Asian culture, head over to the Wing Luke Museum. This neighborhood also hosts multiple cultural festivals during the year, so be sure to make plans to check them out before you visit. Ready for a little bit more culture? The finer neighborhood that we want to explore in this episode is the iconic Queen Anne. Queen Anne's close proximity to downtown makes it one of Seattle's most visited neighborhoods. Lower Queen Anne is also the home to the Seattle Center, an important hub for the arts that includes the Seattle Opera, several theater companies, and the Pacific Northwest Ballet Company. If you happen to be in Lower Queen Anne and you love music and pop culture, make sure to visit the EMP Museum. The building itself is a sight to behold, but don't forget to head inside to check out the cool sci-fi and music exhibits. With its array of Victorian houses, Queen Anne is one of the most picturesque neighborhoods in Seattle. For a truly amazing view that encompasses not only the whole neighborhood, but also a large part of Seattle, visit Cary Park in Upper Queen Anne. On a clear day, you'll be able to see all the way to Elliott Bay. As you probably already noticed, most places in Seattle have a long history that not everyone is familiar with. Without going too in-depth, we decided to offer you a glimpse of the most historical places in town. First up, Pioneer Square. Located in downtown Seattle, Pioneer Square used to be the center of the city. After arriving on Alki Beach, Seattle founders began building wooden structures all around what is called Square today. Sadly, it all burned to the ground during the Great Seattle Fire of 1889. Sturdy bricks buildings were built in their place, and some of them remain to this day. Something that most people may not know is that Pioneer Square and the neighborhoods around it were once Seattle's most notorious and vice-ridden areas. Known as Skid Row until well into the 20th century, this part of the city housed a large collection of brothels, pawn shops, and gambling houses. During the 1960s, the neighborhood went through a process of renewal, and today it's home to multiple cafes, art galleries, bookstores, and nightclubs. If you happen to be near the Pioneer Square, you should take the opportunity to visit the historic Smith Tower. At one time considered one of the tallest buildings in the country, today it features an observation deck that offers breathtaking views of the city. To learn even more about the square's rich history, you can also take the underground tour, which I've been able to experience myself. This takes you through the labyrinth of streets, rooms, and buildings that were buried under the city after the 1889 fire. Pioneer Square is definitely one of the most underrated places in the city, but we cannot end our episode about Seattle without talking about one of the city's most iconic places, Pike Place Market. Founded in 1907, Pike Place Market is the longest running farmer's market in the country. Before the market existed, busy farmers had to entrust their goods to middlemen, who would sell them and give farmers a small part of the profits. Corruption was such a big problem that even consumers couldn't help but notice that they were being charged exorbitant prices for their produce. Unsatisfied with how things were being handled, consumers and farmers petitioned to have a formal market established, and Pike Place Market was born. After its expansion in 1914, business continued to grow well into the 20th century. In the 1960s, however, the market was briefly in danger of being torn down. By 1972, things finally returned to normal, and the market was declared a historic preservation zone and placed back in the public's hands. Visited by more than 10 million people a year, Pike Place Market is truly heart of Seattle. If you happen to be there, make sure to visit the original Starbucks. In addition to getting a cup of coffee to warm you up, it is a great place to watch people from all over the world who come just to take a picture of the iconic building. One of the weirdest things to do while you're in the market is to visit the gum wall in the post alley. Make sure to bring some colorful gum with you so that you can leave your mark as well. 
Finally, you can't visit the market without testing some of the amazing food offered at the 60 plus eateries. We promise that you won't be disappointed. They tell me it's hard to run with the way to go. On the other hand, what I have heard is that it's just as hard with the way to live. But give me the gold. I'll take the gold. I'll run right here. Run right here. Why have all the gold? Regardless of how well you know a city, there are always new things to discover. We hope that we have shown you that Seattle is much more than just the birthplace of Starbucks, or home to the Seahawks. It's a city with one of the richest histories in the nation, and some of the coolest outdoor spaces in all of the Pacific Northwest. Next time you travel, go off the beaten path. You never know what you might find. Thanks for joining us. I'm Marcella Diaz. I'm Spencer Anderson, and we'll see you next time on Tour to Go. Choo-choo-string guitar.